Good afternoon. So glad you've joined us today for DI Live's Get Up to Speed on Samulia Works Advanced Design Validation for All. We invite you to stick around after today's presentation for a live Q&A. We will get started momentarily as we are waiting just a couple of minutes for others to join us. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Without further ado, I'll hand things over to Robert Warren. Welcome everyone. I wanted to start off and look at SamoyaWorks product offerings and their capabilities. I also wanted to discuss how and where your analysis solves. Then we'll see the product in action. Samoya Works is a 3D experience analysis option that can be utilized with any version of SolidWorks or as its own product. There are three main flavors of Samoya Works, starting with Samoya Structural Simulation Designer. Structural Simulation Designer can be likened to SolidWorks Simulation Professional. Structural Simulation Designer gives you the ability to do linear static analysis on parts and assemblies, resonant frequency analysis, thermal analysis, and buckling. Structural Performance Engineer can be likened to SolidWorks Simulation Premium. This gives you nonlinear static capabilities, thermal structural analysis, and nonlinear dynamic analyses utilizing the Abacus Implicit Solver. Structural Mechanics Engineer goes one step further, giving you nonlinear dynamic analysis utilizing the Abacus Explicit Solver, quasi static explicit solver solutions, and complex frequency analysis. SimuliaWorks on the 3D Experience platform gives you advanced mesh capability, a powerful general contact, advanced materials, explicit and implicit Abacus solvers, quasi static analysis in cloud computing. SimuliaWorks gives you multiple different options for solving your study. There's local interactive, local non-interactive, and cloud. Local interactive allows you to understand what's happening locally as you solve. This gives you iteration information, errors or warning information, and allows you to understand how long the solution is going to take. This utilizes up to four cores on your machine. Local non-interactive just doesn't give you the feedback as you solve. This still utilizes up to four cores on your local machine. You also have the ability to utilize more cores by purchasing tokens. Tokens do not expire and they allow you to use as many cores as tokens. 
cloud computing utilizes credits. Credits are something that is consumed, so as you use them, they will expire. Cloud computing allows you to utilize the powerhouse server computers to solve your advanced nonlinear analysis. This allows you to utilize SMOIA works on computers that normally wouldn't be able to handle it. In the story of Next Level Validation, you'll see how we've expanded your simulation-driven design capabilities and leveraged the best of both worlds. Industry-leading design tools from SOLIDWORKS integrating with the industry-leading analysis tools from Simulia using best-in-class Abacus FEA technology. Discovering product performance issues early in the design phase not only increases your bottom line as a company by avoiding costly rework, but empowers you as a designer, engineer, or analyst to make better products. Figuring out the best design takes multiple iterations, and the ability to rapidly test various scenarios helps you and your team make more informed decisions faster. Solving design challenges is one thing. Manufacturing a product is another. And being able to validate how your product is manufactured increases the value of your validation efforts. Let's follow a designer and a structural analyst to see how they collaborate and solve these various scenarios with the BioDapt Moto Knee. Debbie the designer is working on updating the mechanics of the Moto Knee, a next-gen prosthetic designed to withstand the high impacts of action sports. From her company's dashboard, she sees that Adam, the analyst, found a mechanical issue with the first revision. Adam's simulation results can be viewed right from the web browser, and Debbie confirms that the lower bracket definitely needs to be redesigned based on Adam's findings. The simulation results tell Debbie where the changes need to be made, and she starts to design a new revision of the bracket. Proud of her work, she thinks the new design will now be strong enough, but before she sends her new design to Adam, she wants to validate it herself. The simulation apps in her structural design role can guide her through all the steps to validate the strength of her new design. The built-in assistant makes it easy for Debbie to add loads and fixtures and then run her analysis and review the results. Feeling confident in her new design, Debbie updates the Moto Knee assembly with a new revision. Both Adam and Debbie are working from the same dashboard, so Adam can see the new simulation and review it. Adam will also move forward validating the new assembly. Since both the design and simulation data are stored and connected on the 3D Experience platform, Adam is easily able to create a new revision of the simulation he created earlier. After opening the new revision, he simply replaces the old model with the new one to reflect Debbie's changes. From there, he needs to modify the fixtures, loads, and connections that are associated with the new geometry and resolve the analysis. And just like Debbie, Adam also uses the assistant to make sure he doesn't miss anything before he runs the study. With the results complete, Adam compares the two studies. He confirms the new Moto Knee lower bracket is now strong enough and no longer suffers from the excessive displacement of the earlier design. The assistant helps both designers and analysts alike run studies fast and evolve their designs quickly based on valuable simulation results. In creating and managing design validation information on the 3D Experience platform keeps you and your data connected so your team can stay productive. Adam was able to validate the strength of the new bracket, but how will this affect the rest of the assembly? Due to the harsh conditions of action sports, the Moto Knee is often subject to harmonic and random vibration loading. 
Furthermore, BioDAP created the Moto need to be adaptable to many different extreme environments, so there are multiple different configurations of the design. Each is customized for both the feel for the wearer and based around the sport they are competing in. So any time a change is made, every configuration needs to be validated for each extreme loading condition. Similar to the creation of the linear structural validation, Adam is able to create a frequency scenario with the apps provided in the structural performance engineer role. He uses the assistant to complete all the necessary steps. After solving, Adam is relieved that most of the natural frequencies of this configuration of the Moto Ni are outside the expected operating region. To better understand the remaining vibration concerns, Adam creates a random vibration scenario using the structural mechanics engineer role. This role expands the types of physics that can be addressed and the types of studies that can be solved. Conveniently, new scenarios are stored in the same simulation project as the previous results. and he can see that the performance of this configuration is acceptable. Now that he has both the natural frequency and random vibration studies completed for the one configuration, he can easily repurpose this study and solve additional Moto Ni configurations at another time. For now, he moves on with the next validation task. Adam now needs to understand how the different configurations of the Moto Ni will perform under different dynamic loading environments. Swapping out the guide place of the Moto knee will change the response of the knee under load, so Adam creates an explicit dynamic study that includes a prescribed rotation, and adds sensors to calculate the required torque to achieve the rotation. Adam also needs to understand the force feedback felt by the wearer to ensure comfort and performance. After solving one iteration, Adam makes a quick change to the plates in SOLIDWORKS and updates the model in his study. Only the changed parts need to be remeshed, which is done automatically by a simple update. Furthermore, Adam continues real-world testing and modifies the spring and damper properties of the shock. The Moto Knee is designed to be configured quickly by each user, and going through this battery of studies ensures the wearer of the Moto Knee will be able to adapt their prosthetic on the fly for maximum performance and flexibility. The Structural Performance Engineer and Structural Mechanics Engineer roles on the 3D Experience platform enable Adam to validate various configurations, use cases, and loading environments of the Moto Knee to better understand and communicate its performance in the real world. Without the cost of manufacturing or testing a single prototype, BioAdapt has already evolved the design fast, ensuring that physical testing will be a quick and painless step in the engineering design process. Based on his calculations, Adam determined that the deep draw steel foot cover would be the least expensive manufacturing method to create a strong cover that will protect the valuable components of the BioDAP VF2 foot. Deep draw manufacturing has a lot of variables, and retooling a punch or die can be very expensive, so Adam wants to do everything he can to ensure this design is right the first time. By using conversations in 3D Swim, Adam asked Debbie to make him a model for the deep draw analysis. She's already on top of it and tells him where to find the model. From his simulation app, Adam can open the model right away and creates a new study. His goal is to discover how close the resultant metal shape will be to the original design, figure out how much thinning will occur in the material, 
and determine the minimum blank size to achieve the desired shape. Adam makes quick work of setting up the properties and the boundary conditions to simulate the manufacturing operation. Since he's using the explicit dynamic solver, the complex contacts and material behavior solve quickly. Adam discovers that the thickness variation across the deformed shape is nominal, so now he moves on to optimizing the size of the blank. To optimize the amount of material used for each foot cover produced, Adam makes another request to Debbie to make the modification. Debbie uses XDesign, the design app in 3D Creator role, to make the appropriate modifications. Back in a simulation app, Adam updates the model and reruns the study. The results show that he's determined the best stock size for the manufacturing operation. The 3D Experience platform not only delivers powerful technology for advanced simulations, it enables coworkers to thrive in a highly collaborative environment. Simulia makes the simulation-driven design more powerful than ever with assistive workflows and sophisticated virtual prototyping capabilities, traditionally reserved for specialists, so you can reduce project risk and increase the chance of launch success. Simulia works on the 3D Experience platform as a powerful tool geared towards all SOLIDWORKS users. But don't take my word for it. Take Mike Schultz, president of BioDAP. So if you're like me, after seeing Structural Performance Engineer and Structural Mechanics Engineer, you might be wondering, how does this fit into my use of SOLIDWORKS? Well, let's take a look at that specifically with a model that we're going to run in Simulation Premium first, and then later in Structural Performance Engineer. So starting off, I want to cover the analysis of this rubber bumper, specifically in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium. So we'll open up the file, kind of talk through the setup of the model. First, we need to add in simulation to SOLIDWORKS. If we review the model, it's made up of two compressing plates and a rubber bumper that is in the inside uh, in between those. So the compressing plates are made of steel, the rubber bumper is a hyperelastic material and has all the appropriate properties to go along with it. Using this mathematical material model is only available in Sim Premium. Since the bumper will compress fully, the internal holes in the size of the bumper need no penetration contacts assigned. Notice that there's a large number of contacts assigned to accommodate the collapse of this bumper. The bottom of the setup is fixed, so it's immovable. and then a 55 millimeter displacement is uh, the load applied that compresses this, this bumper. Also note the reference geometry constraint on the top uh, plate that keeps this in plane and moving only in the Y direction. A standard meshing scheme is applied generating tetrahedral elements that map the geometry closely. Study properties need to be assigned, like the 0 0.01 second initial time step. Under the advanced options in Simulation Premium, we have the ability to view the results as the solution solves. Let's take a look at the SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium solving this nonlinear study. This is a rather difficult simulation to solve. Not only is the material hyperelastic, but the model moves through the large displacement, high strain, and sliding contacts. Now I sped up the solution since we only have a short amount of time. 
The solution took over an hour and only solved through 70% of the applied load. I terminated the solution due to the time step decreasing in size. This is a good indicator that the solution is starting to diverge and falter. Let's look at the results. SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium did a good job of iterating through this solution. With further mesh control and a couple more runs, we may be able to get this to solve to 100%. But why did we have an issue? One reason is because of how the implicit solver handles strain. Depending upon the material, the geometry, the type of analysis, this can be between 300 and 500 percent. Sliding contacts are not easy to calculate, especially with as many as were assigned here. In the tetrahedral mesh, while it's a great meshing tool, it's fast, maps the geometry accurately, it starts to break down in high strain high element distortion situations. So where do we go from here? This is where Structural Performance Engineer fills a gap between Simulia and SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium. Getting the model into Structural Performance Engineer is easy and quick. A 3D Experience connector is added into SOLIDWORKS and on the right hand side of the task pane the connector shows up at the bottom. You can specify what the connector brings over from SOLIDWORKS Simulation, including materials, boundary conditions, geometry, and so on. The connector launches a login to the 3D Experience platform. You choose the location you wish the file to reside and your role. When the connector finishes, a full green bar and the option to select Done is shown. Closing the connector takes you out of the 3D Experience splash screen. Notice the cool 3D loading indicator. When loaded, the Structural Performance Engineer interface opens. The Structural Scenario app opens and is indicated by the top header next to the 3D compass. On the left-hand side of the screen, similar to the SOLIDWORKS simulation tree, the Structural Performance Engineer specification tree resides. Like simulation, you can add and edit model setup from this tree. At the bottom of the screen is the action bar, very similar to the command manager in SOLIDWORKS. To the right of the screen is a setup assistant. On the action bar, there is a feature manager. The feature manager is the easiest way to understand what is set up on the model, including what carried over from SOLIDWORKS simulation. We can see the fixture, known as a clamp, in Structural Performance Engineer is already applied in the model. The reference geometry loads, including the compression of 55 millimeters, is applied as well. The mesh is present located under the element type. The global bonded contact did not carry over along with the no penetration contacts we specified in SOLIDWORKS simulation. These contacts were replaced with the Simulia General Contact. If you're unfamiliar with the General Contact, it's a powerful global no penetration contact that is always applied and requires no additional face pairs to be selected. We will edit and turn off the geometry correction in the General Contact. Double clicking on any of the lines in the Feature Manager allows you to edit that item. Switching from the Model to the Mesh tab in the Action Bar will open all of the mesh specific options. Similarly, Double clicking on the mesh item in the assistant opens the mesh menu as well. Selecting all three and choosing update shows the current mesh brought over from the SOLIDWORKS simulation. Selecting all three mesh items again, we will delete the mesh from the model in order to remesh with a hex element scheme. The hex element is well suited for high strain applications. Choosing a swept 3D mesh allows us to apply a hex mesh to the bumper model. Select the face the sweep starts from, in this case the front face, the element size and rows. The element type is chosen to be linear and hex only. The upper and lower plate are applied the same way, however only one row is applied due to their thickness. Remember the bond of contact that was rolled into the general contact? To keep both Structural Performance Engineer and SOLIDWORKS SIM setups the same, we will add a tie connection from the plates to the bumper. 
select the connection from the assistant. The tie connection is similar to bonded, keeping two items together. Use F7 to hide the geometry to make it easier to apply the tie, and F8 to unhide. A second tie is added for the upper plate to the rubber bumper. Just to show you we can edit anything at any time, in this case the mesh properties need an option deactivated. Before running a simulation, I like to run a check to verify everything has been added correctly. We received a green check, so we are good to proceed with the remainder of the setup. Let's take a moment to save the simulation. Choosing the arrow in the upper corner saves the model and setup. Before we run the analysis, let's take a look at the step properties. This is the same as the study properties in SOLIDWORKS simulation. We will set the initials time step and max step size. One last change is to set the mesh type to hybrid for the linear brick and linear wedge. Hybrid elements are a good choice for nearly incompressible rubber like the one used here. Note the use of four local cores. This is the default for structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer on your local machine. The additional purchase of tokens will open up additional cores up to 32 on your machine. And you can also use cloud computing with credits to have access to up to 32 cores on the cloud. Choosing Simulate opens the Run dialog. I'm going to take this opportunity to change the units of the results for this run. However, the units can be changed globally. Now here's where the magic happens. Note, this is solving real time. The solver window shows a good bit of detail about the run including the iterations and progression. What took us over an hour to fail in SOLIDWORKS Simulation Premium took under two minutes solving using Structural Performance Engineer. The implicit abacus solver is popular for a reason. Reviewing the results is very similar to SOLIDWORKS Simulation. We can step through each step of the solution verifying what the stress, displacement, and position of the object is. you can see that the model ran to 100%. It is fully compressed, and the general contact of the Smulia Abacus Solver did a great job of understanding how that rubber bumper came in contact with itself. We can also choose the play button on the 3D compass. I know, I didn't think it was used for anything either, but here it animates the result plots. We don't have to just look at stress, we can look at things like displacement as well, and through each plot step. Contact pressure is another popular plot to look at. Sectioning the result in Structural Performance Engineer is very similar to section clipping in SOLIDWORKS Simulation. Max and minimum annotations can also be applied. Structural Performance Engineer and Structural Mechanics Engineer give you all the necessary tools to analyze and understand your design constraints. Hopefully this gave you a better preview of what it looks like to go from SOLIDWORKS, utilizing SOLIDWORKS simulation, and advancing your 
simulation, analysis capabilities to structural performance engineer and structural mechanics engineer. Thank you.